Hey guys, Roman here, so please like, comment, subscribe. Even though this episode is called Willis is Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 13, Exit Stage Left, this should have been called Brooke versus uh, Brooke Brooke versus Bridget. Because that I was cackling during their segment. So I'm gonna quickly power through all this mess. By the way, just so that you guys know that I'm not making this up, I have my microphone, my new microphone here. I've actually had this for a while. Shout out to my sis. Uh, and this is the adapter. I have to get another adapter aside from both of these that weren't cheap so that this could all work together. So the sound will be fixed for the season finale as well as for the reunion and all that. Um, I was hoping to have it done by this video, but you know. Ugh. Anyway, it starts with, oh, the meaning of the minds. You know, I have to give it up, because the thing is, we never said Moniz can't sing. We definitely didn't say that. Moniz definitely can sing. I liked her song. I liked her look. I thought it was great. I just felt like it was wasted, because you could tell that this was just a choreographed moment. Her, it's like popping the music, have her go and do whatever she does, whether it was singing over, well, it was definitely singing over the track, um, for I guess for TV purposes, however that works. And she's there with Ray as well as Masika because guess who they're talking about? They're mainly talking about Hazel E and Alexis because uh, Ray gets all of these messages that, what's going on? What's going on? So it's this diss track. It's a diss track about him as well as Masika. So they're playing it. And, you know, with the Ray saying what he's saying about... You, uh, you know, one person's feet being dirty, the other person being fat, this and that. And then, then we get to Alexa Sky's part, which is, it, it sounds, oh, I said, what is this? This is bad. It already didn't sound great. The production was already, uh, but then to, to top it all off, I should say the beat. Let's say the production it was what it was, but the beat was, mm -mm. and then you have Alexis, who we knew that was going to be rough. So it's a joke. We're bringing Moniz, she's back. She, Petty Moniz is back. So we're going to have to deal with that. We get to a nice segment. It's Keisha Cole and her father. Her father's, her father's professional boxer. She met him a year ago. Or at this time, maybe it's now like two years. But she met him recently. And what happened was he was telling someone that, you know what, this girl here... She, you know she's my daughter because he was listening to one of her songs on the radio and he said that's my daughter because he he had a relationship with frankie with teacher cole's mom and he figured you know what let me go reach out and see if this is really the case or not and i i was thinking to myself wow that's kind of sad that all that time lapsed by again he acknowledged that he was in the place to be a good father anyway so it's not like oh Frankie kept him away or anything. He had a lot of stuff to work through himself. So it was great that he came into Keisha's life at a time where she really needed it. Things going on in her relationship, her career, and she needs some stability. So in comes her father, who's in a very stable place, and they're actually friends. And it was really nice to see. It was just nice to see. And she was saying she appreciates him. She doesn't hold anything against him. She, again, we saw her show. So we, we know she had great, um, you know, foster parents. But, of course, there's always a difference between that and your real parent. <laughs> and your biological. Because those were her real parents. Her biological parents. And, but it's nice that she has that. And he says, you know what? Shout to you. You're a good woman. You're there for your child. You're working. You're there. And you still uh, make it easy for the father to be around. And, you know, just, just go and just pat her on the back a couple of times. And that was nice. That was really nice. I, I appreciated that scene immensely. And I'm sure a lot of people did as well. Now we get to the messy. Donatella, remember that's... Uh, was it Angel, Angel, what's her name? Is it Angel Love? Uh, well, i.e., I uh, what, what's, what's the child? So-and-so's brother. Dang it, how can I not think of his name right now? Anyway, so the manager who clearly, the producers are like, you know what, this manager is great for TV. She's great for TV because she fits right in. So let's put her on. And 
Uh, she was going and talking to Brooke. Brooke is talking about her music. And she's like, girl fight, that was great. Brooke said she had a child. She sat down. She knew that either she had to come back with a girl fight part two, which her headspace wasn't there anymore. So she's now working on new stuff. Donatella has a showcase. She has a lot of female uh, artists. And it's about women empowerment. And how this all works is, oh, okay, I'm going to share some of my new music with you. You are? Oh, perfect. Tight all sign. That's what I was thinking of. So then she goes and plays a song. And I'm thinking, yeah, this does sound nice. This doesn't sound like you, but this sounds nice. I said, wait, why does this sound familiar? Because she had an engineer go and send her the song. Uh, you know, an engineer go and send her a song. But the song... <laughs> Well, I tell you, this is one of the, the funniest moments ever. She goes and plays that song. It's not her voice. It's Bridget Kelly's voice. And she knows that voice. So she's like, what the? So you were working with Marcus and you went behind my back. The song that was supposed to be mine. And yet Marcus went, I guess because we were on the outs and gave it to her. And she was acting like, oh. I'll definitely let you know if I see Marcus, if I'm talking to Marcus. Oh, what you ready to do that? She wasn't your friend. Come on now. So now she has to go apologize to Aunt Tella, says, you know, I'll get the correct version of the song to you. She goes to April, remember Marion's. That was funny because a mo for a moment I was like, I'm surprised that they're still together. And then I remembered they're not. They're not. And she has this out, this wine launch. So, you know, you know Brooke was down for that. She has to go and just sip, sip, yeah, sip, sip. One more time, sip, sip. So everything's going well for 2.5 seconds, and then Bridget comes. Here's the plan. Well, I'm going to act dumb and pretend like I don't know what's going on. Because uh, April saw, oh, Fizz is there. All right, see you, see y'all. Fizz and April essentially talk about the fact that Fizz wants to get B2K back. <laughs> Everybody had to look of How? <laughs> Because she, she said, well, we were all thinking, Omarion was the lead singer. He sang most of the songs. I, I, I'm sorry. He sang the major parts on most of the songs. So, how, how, what, where, when, thinking of replacing him with who? With Ray? <laughs> mm, he's not in the headspace. To, he's on his own cloud. He's making his own money. He's not trying to go and deal with the mess. Because he especially can't get the full group together. He's not trying to deal with all that. So then we have this weird conversation between Bridget and Brooke. And so Brooke is Team Marcus. And no, Bridget is Team Marcus. And because she's Team Marcus, she makes it very well known. Oh, well, you know, I went to uh, Miss Lori's birthday party instead of going to Catalina with Booby. And she said, oh, okay, that was a smart decision. That was great. And... This is like, I'm glad that you, you know, you chose correctly instead of trying to be someone's mistress or something like that. And I'm thinking, just like she thought, now, wait a minute now. You're the same woman that went, not only did you cheat on your boyfriend multiple times with many dudes, you also had the audacity to go and take that man from his wife. I said, what? At that point. James' ex-wife wasn't his, wasn't, um, he wasn't hers anymore. That's all that meant. But, <laughs> so the story continues, and now it makes sense why James was still trying to make it work with Bridget. I went and left my wife for you, and then you're going to go and cheat me with all these men? Like, how many, they're looking really stupid? No, no, we're going to make this work. <laughs> this is so stupid, but I was cackling, because I said, this can't be life right now. You're telling me. They do not like each other. It, it, it's just a petty back and forth. And <laughs> it's this whole thing of now Bridge is also trying to think, wait a minute, did Booby, was Booby using? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, who knows? Because right now, again, they're keeping it cute. I'm thinking, dang, I just want someone to blurt out what's been going on so you can get the full details of the mess. Of the mess. Oh, Monique surprised her, you know, title of Queen of Messy. She goes and meets with Alexis Sky, who again, they don't have any beef, but it's the whole taking sides. Monique gives Alexis Sky plane tickets and a restraining order, says, 
no, cease and desist. You need to stop what you're doing and you need to take your flight out. You need to go. And I'm thinking, so again, we have Masika's issue, which is Alexis Sky, going and meeting with everyone else except for Masika. No one sees the no one sees how this is a problem. Come on now, this is stupid. This is stupid. I'm thinking this is a mess. Of course, you know, in order to stop any mess, there's always a car, a table, whatever between people. So we move on from that. Uh, Ray goes to meet up with Fizz. Fizz is like, I want to bring back the group together. Marianne's acting a little flaky. So what about we go and we do like a super group? I'm thinking, wait. But how would you make a super group if you don't have a your Okay, so, uh, uh, Ray, why don't you come in? He said, wait, <laughs> wait, what? Omarion's, oh, again, everyone's on the same page. Like, this doesn't make any sense. But Ray's also thinking, this is opportunity. Maybe this is the big break I've been hoping for. I'm thinking, that's only if people buy into the idea, which they most likely won't. So then there's that. So we have... Lucci go and meet up with A1 because it's all this back and forth of hold on. Uh, Alright. So it's the whole issue of Lucci with his ladies and the fact that things escalated and I really didn't care about that because I care about what happens here. Again, this is the Brooke versus uh, Bridget show. That's all this was. So, we have, and this is because I remember this. Bridget's tr trying to figure out, this is cute and all because Bridget comes in, she originally wasn't going to go to her friend Marx's showcase. So, Brooke, you know, told her, you know, that's kind of messed up. So then she comes, she gets there late. They play a song, Bridget, no, Brooke says play the song. So when Brooke has that song being played, we said, uh-oh, because that's the virgin, the virgin, the version of the song that has Bridget's voice instead of Brooke's. So Bridget's just thinking, oh, so she finally found out. Okay, cool. Don't really care. Marcus is the one that's like, uh-oh. So then we have this whole mess. And I say this whole mess because now it's one versus the other. And I'm, I'm, I'm completely over it. You know that these women don't like each other. This is when Bridget acknowledges the fact that she, uh, since so-and-so didn't want to go to Carolina, she went instead. She figured she was helping you two relationship, figuring it out by going, getting with Carolina, going to Carolina with uh, Booby, doing whatever she did with him. And I I'm looking at this like, is this really happening? It's like you use a hoe, use a hoe, use a hoe, use a hoe. Oh, you a trollop. And it's, why would Bridget say, "Oh, I was saving"? You know what? I saved you. I opened up my legs so that you didn't have to. I'm thinking, what? Who says that? What is going on? We have solo Lucci in the back acting a plum fool. I'm thinking Safari would been doing the same thing. So no, Safari gives you those. So, but so Lucci's just like. I can't believe I'm getting paid to watch him do this. This is amazing. <laughs> Mark is like, what? What? How did I get caught in between them? What? <laughs> and then, bro, bro, she didn't like that. She turns around and like, you know what? I could call Booby up right now and they be doing this, X, Y, and Z. Mark is looking at her like, what? 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 Why would you say that? Why would you think that? And then here goes Brooke again. You know what? Bridget and I, we swore that uh, due to Bridget being Marcus's friends, we wouldn't scrap. But trust and believe, I wanted to go and knock the air right out of her. I'm thinking, what? This is stupid. None of this makes any sense. We get you two never really liked each other. Uh, Bridget is really friends with Marcus. She only tolerates you. Let's be very clear. That's why I was over the fact that you were oversharing. I'm thinking you're doing all this oversharing to continue to gain her trust. But the joke's on you. The dude that 
you've been feeling that, but still your friends. So you two, you guys are in the friend zone. He went and did whatever he did with Bridget and has you over here like boo boo the fool because you didn't know about it because it really isn't any of your business because you decided to go back to your ex and see how this all worked out. And now Bridget's saying, you know what? I saved you. I saved your box by, you know, letting the dude do whatever to her box instead of yours and your relationship. And this is all a mess. This is a mess. This is perfect for TV, but I'm upset. I'm thinking, you're really letting all this get in the way of what you're supposed to be promoting, which is your music. That's why I respect people like Cardi B immensely. That's because she said, nope. As soon as she got into that major fight, Involving her producer and her producers at the time girlfriend. She said no, that's it. I'm done That's how you do it because this is a mess. This is a mess. This is entertaining for 2.5 seconds But a year from now no one will care But your music could create bigger opportunities, but you're doing all this check 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 really? So then we get to Keisha Cole. She's talking to Lyrica because they have the connection with the father. Lyrica wanted to first apologize, say, you know, that wasn't the issue with you. Her album is about her sister, her twin sister who died when she was three. And so a one was supposed to be helping her with the project, but he's been focusing on other people. And so that's why she got upset. Keisha said, you know, I'm cool. No problem. But then she kind of talked about, I know you reconnected with your father. How did that go? She said, no, it was great. You know, we're actually friends and it's just cool. She said, that's really nice because when my sister died, that was the last time I essentially heard my father. And that's really sad. That is really sad. That is really sad. So she's just like, you know, maybe one day there could be some hope because she would love to bridge a gap. But until then, who knows? But it was nice to see them have some, you know, come together. So Lucci brings his two ladies. He has, because I guess now, because before, we know before Chanel's coast wasn't claiming to little Lucci now like that. But now she's like, oh, we've been dating, you know, this and that. It really recently, I'm thinking, oh, dating like as in boyfriend. Oh, 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 okay. Because Alexis Sky, and I'm thinking, did she really pop up? This is, but no, Lucci invited her because he wanted to go and, you know, stop them from doing all this arguing and mess. And Alexis is saying how, you know, it was pretty messed up because next time I see you is with someone new that you're claiming and it just feels like it's coming out of left field. So that's why I was upset. But they don't have any relations with each other. You know, Chanel wasn't saying much because, again, they don't have any real issues with each other. This was just the young temperament of Alexis Sky kind of going off. And I'm thinking, but Chanel, did you not just hear how he said he feels a certain way if she... He saw um, Alexis with another dude. This is why this is just a made-for-TV relationship, and that's it. So Lyrica's doing her song. Everyone's jamming. The song does sound good. I have to give it to Lyrica, because we know she can sing, so that's not a problem. And A1, he is a good producer, so that's not a problem me either. Ray J's telling everyone, Oh, so my boy Fizz wanted to go and let me know that maybe we can go and form this super group and make these real Gucci while he's doing all that, and people are still getting like, mm, okay, if you say so. Alexis Sky and Chanel, they're walking in together, and they both greet Lyrica. Again, all of this whole, I only have a problem with you because I've got put in the middle with someone else. Don't you try to figure out, this is, why, 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 but no. They're all good. They even joke about, ah, maybe we'll do stuff together. Ah, I'm thinking, oh. Okay, okay. So Lyrica really appreciates love and support of her husband, but they're not done yet because she still needs to go and visit her sister. So her mom is there, A1 is there, and it's nice because she's just coming together and she just appreciated, you know, having all of them there. And the last scene was Bridget, she was performing. Well, actually, she, actually she was practicing for the showcase and Brooke was there. Brooke I was like, uh, whatever. Brooke was talking to Masika. After everything was all said and done, then we see Hazel Lee come out. And that was it for Masika. Masika was pissed. She was like, oh, I'm so hey Hazel and uh, Hazel Lee. Oh, you doing too much. No, not doing too much. I'm tired of you. She's just showing up and popping up. And I'm thinking, so 
we have Bridget and the same showcase with Brooke. I said, okay, I can see that. With Masika and his, this is love and hip hop. They pay for the space. I mean, come on, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid here. No, this is this is all contrived, and that I can't call it a fight because it was it was literally a dragging. That's all it was. Masika, she went whoop whoop. Elevation is key when you're trying to kick someone. Hazel is in a fire, so she I don't think she really expected uh, Masika to actually get that close to her. She got her, was dragging her off the stage. I said, oh my god, this she's going to break in half. She, security was there at this point and trying to stop her. It was like, you're going to break this girl. Stop it. Stop it. So that was it. I really didn't care. I thought it was going to be something else. But that was it. Reunion next week. Finale next week.